Well, welcome to my office. This is not any great video production, but just a thing we want to do to help train you and give you some ideas for facilitating these H2O gr small groups that you're going to be doing starting actually coming up uh, this next week. And so I want to walk you through some ideas on this. And it's important to keep in mind as you're doing the whole uh, small group is that it's not an end in itself. We've been talking about this being a four week journey, journey of discovery, where we talked about it having four weeks, two tracks and one message. And the two tracks are the Sunday morning and the H2O group. So part of this is we really want to get engaged, people to get engaged in Sunday morning uh, at the church. So this isn't an, in, isn't an end in itself. And so here's how your group will go, and you probably will have already gotten this information, is that each week you'll be seeing a very well done quality DVD that carries through a subject. And then at the end of that time, there'll be about anywhere from 40 to 45 minutes of, uh, of discussion. And this discussion, these questions are very, very important. You don't want it to go an hour and 15 minutes um, because that, that gets too long for people. But each week what you're going to get, and these will come to you online, you'll get some questions just like this. You'll get four or five questions that you're going to lead out and facilitate after the DVD is done. And then also each week, uh, I'm going to be doing this that you can upload and watch on YouTube to just give you some ideas of how to use these questions. It's not, not to, to box you in, but give you some flow and some direction. And you're obviously welcome to do all the creativity and add things that, that you want to do uh, in that environment. It'd be really helpful when you watch the, um, uh, the YouTube thing that you have these questions with you. Because that way you can fill in the blanks and you can do some things there. Uh, and if you've got any questions on this, of course, you can always give me a call or call Sean. And if you've got any problems, call Sean. If you've got any, hey, that's great, call me. All right, let me start off just with giving you a couple, I just call them big picture uh, ideas. Uh, before we go through this week's questions, because this has to do with the entire study. It's really important to keep in mind that this particular study, H H2O, is not just an informational kind of study. It's really a relational piece, and those two components are very, very, very important. Um, we want people to get involved in conversation. We want people to get to know each other. We want them to feel comfortable, because you've heard the old adage that people don't care what you know until they know that you care, so that's really a big part of this. And honestly, this can be kind of scary. Because you don't know what people are going to say when you open it up and you just let people start asking questions and making comments from their past. Uh, it can get kind of scary. So just let me encourage you on this because this is always the big deal when you, when you facilitate a group. Let me just encourage you to chill and relax on this, okay? Don't worry about whether the, whether the answers are right or whether things are, are, are going wrong. Or even if, they, even if they make a wrong statement, don't pounce on them and say, oh, that's so wrong, don't you know, because the Bible says this, because that'll just be so intimidating to somebody. And even if you have the right answer, but people get scared away, that goes in, a lo in the lost column. Because one of our goals is to connect with people, get them coming back, get them coming back, get them coming back. So you definitely don't want to get in any arguments. If somebody says something that's so off, like uh, Jesus was Muslim, you just kind of go, well, yeah, it's kind of interesting thought. Let's see how that works out over the next few weeks as we're together. Instead of pouncing on that and giving them five verses, uh, and so they feel really intimidated and really stupid and they don't ever come back. And that brings us to a, really a second piece of this whole study that I want us to get. This is a process study. That's why we called it a journey of discovery, which means we only parse out one piece at a time. And so there's a lot of pieces that won't be there in a particular, uh, in a particular study. For example, in this very first one that we're doing, uh, which, is, which is talking about really God being a father, it doesn't really talk hardly at all about Jesus, doesn't talk about the cross, doesn't talk about forgiveness, doesn't talk about sin. And some people are going to think, oh, I've got to jump in and include all this. That's going to come in another couple of weeks. And you don't want to just jump there and, and, miss the, and just take people so, too far too fast. Allow them to go on a process one step at a time. Don't rush the story. Let the story unpack itself over the next four weeks. If they're there on Sunday especially and they come to the, to the small group environment, they'll get all the pieces even though it won't be uh, all in, in, uh, in one moment. Don't make this a Bible study. Obviously, we're using the Bible, but don't use this as an opportunity to unpack all you know about a subject to somebody. It's kind of like an iceberg. There's a whole lot more under the water, and we're just dealing with a tip. So don't worry about all the stuff that's under there and feel like you have to go through all that and explain it all, because you're going to have people in your small group that are all over the map spiritually. Some will be very far from God. Some will be damaged. Some will have a lot of questions and hurts. 
And, and, and so we don't want to make them feel intimidated like they don't belong here because somebody else knows so much more than we do because we want them to come back. And this is a part, one of the key parts of, this, of the, these questions is we want people having questions that interest them. And, and you have to be almost like, for lack of a better way to say it, almost like a doctor. You've been to a doctor and they say, does it hurt here? Does it hurt here? And they say, yes, no. When people answer these questions, your just antenna need to be up and you need to be listening. You, know, you need to be listening to what they're saying and registering that because they are telling you volumes about their understanding of God, volumes about their background. And you may have an opportunity to talk about this, uh, maybe on the telephone with them later on, over breakfast sometime. Uh, and so just let it be this journey. Listen very closely, and, uh, and then you can utilize those things. Okay, let me talk about this week. This series, H2O, as you'll, you probably have picked up by now, is a 10-part series, and we're only picking four of them. Some of you may want to carry on and do some of, the, you know, some of the other ones later on, but right now, in order to match it with our four-week journey of discovery, We've only picked four topics. And the first one this week is called Source. And I trust most of you have already watched uh, the DVD. Please do that before you listen to this. Uh, let, let, watch the YouTube thing, get the questions. You need to watch that thing several times. So you really have a feel of where it's going. Uh, and so you can head off uh, some discussion in certain areas. And this first one is trying to get an understanding of the concept of God as Father. God as Father. And so I'm going to go actually go through these questions with you right now. I'm going to read them. You probably have them right in front of you. Then I want to give you some thoughts on these. The first one is this. All of us have ideas about what God is like. Where did you get your ideas, both positive and negative, and have they changed over the years? Now, obviously, people get their concepts of God. A lot of it starts very, very young from their childhood, comes out of their family of origin, comes out of their experiences that they've had, comes out of the culture that they, were, that they grew up in. If they grew up in a Middle Eastern culture or an Israeli culture, it's going to be much different than growing up in America. Some of those people may be in your group. And, and this gives an opportunity for, people to, to start, for you to start to know a little bit about people's background. Register that. Register. Know where they're coming from. And let them talk about this. And, and this is a very good relational piece. Not right or wrong answers. You know, just let them talk, and this will be a relational piece. People get to know each other. The second one is this. Is thinking of God as a father something that gives you comfort or fills you with anxiety? Why or why not? Now, this gets a little bit below the surface here, and you've got to be careful here because it's going to give people the opportunity to talk about their own personal experience of their families growing up. Now, never in a small group do you want to demand transparency. Well, tell me about your parents. Tell me about your dad. People, you know, if they've had a bad experience especially, they'll, they'll kind of shrink back. But open it up. Let people talk about their background. You may hear some very, very interesting things. People come from divided homes or, or abu even abusive parents. Be very careful how, how much you expose this in, a, in, a, uh, in an open environment like this. But this is the first opportunity for people to give you a little, pull back the shade, peel back the onion just a little bit to expose them, uh, to you about their background or to everybody about their background. Now, here's question number three. Here's what it says. Here are some descriptive words the Bible uses when talking about God. On a scale of one to ten, one being the lowest, indicate your agreement or disagreement. Now, I want to encourage you, this week especially, some people already have a notebook and have something to write on, but if not, you make sure and have pens and make sure have some, a little notebook or, or paper, something they can write on. And as you give every one of these words, I want people to, I want, you want them to write down these words and then you're asking them to put a number after the words based from one to ten. One, no, no, I don't agree with this. Ten, yeah, you know, I'm on with that one. And um, th this will give you some insight about uh, people's uh, understanding of God. Uh, I'm reading right off the page here. It says there's two sections to these words. There's eight words in the first section and there's nine words in the second section. There's a reason for this. So you just read these words out loud to the people. And uh, in parentheses in section one, it says these are more impersonal, academic, and non-relational uh, type attributes of God. Don't say that. You're the, only, you're the only one that knows that. By the way, this sheet is only for you. You don't pass this out to everybody. So make sure you don't do that because this gives you some, uh, some thoughts here. Here's some of the words that go on in, like out of the first eight. Do you agree or disagree that God is infinite? Is that, a, is that a one or a ten? Infinite means he has no beginning and no end. Is he eternal? You think God is holy. Don't spend a lot of time on these. Just go through them. Is he all-knowing? Is he impartial? 
Is he all powerful? One to ten on that. Okay, then you just say, okay, now here's, here's another group of words. Again, put a one to ten on this. One, I don't agree with this very much. Ten, I really agree. And here's these, these words. They have, deal, they have our words like this. Loving, forgiving, kind, patient, dependable, and so on. You can work on these. And these words are a lot more personal. They're a lot more intimate. They're a lot more relational. And you see, what you're doing here is finding out whether people have an academic understanding of God or have a personal uh, interaction with God. Do they really feel like God's a loving God? Then there's this question that after you go through this, and people have scaled this on their paper, put after every one of these words, they put a 1 or they put a 10, or somewhere in between there. Here's what you say. It's written right on your paper. You may have marked some things you believe are supposed to be true, but have not been your experience personally. Which of these in your... Uh, which of those in the second group of words have you experienced or not experienced and explain? Now this is really personal because you say a word here like dependable. Do you think God's dependable? Why or why not? Well, somebody says, I only put a five there because I thought he was dependable. And I know he's supposed to be dependable. When I prayed when my mother was sick, nothing happened. And I don't know if, he, if I really can depend on him. Um, a word here, he's compassionate. Compassionate. What do you think? Well, academically, I'm supposed to think he's compassionate. Somebody says, yeah, but when my, when my first wife had cancer and, uh, you know, I just felt really sorry for my wife and God didn't do, it didn't seem like God did anything. Now, your response may be, oh, man, I've got to correct this person that maybe it was because, you know, that prayer, um, God had something else in mind. Just let it rest. Don't try to explain it biblically. Well, let me go back and tell you about God's compassion. This isn't a study on God's compassion. Just let that sit because you're now learning about somebody and where they are and you're letting them process this on their own. Question number four says this. Some think of God as an angry father or as a cosmic rule keeper. Why do you think this is true? Does God have rules? Does God get angry? Now this is going to be a very interesting thing to have people again start to discuss this and um, think of him as an angry father. Why do you think this is true? Why do people think that God's a rule keeper? And who knows what they may say? They may say, oh, I grew up in a religious institution that, man, if I did something wrong, my hand got slapped. Or my dad made me go to church, and my mom made me go to church, and it was a bunch of hypocrites. And so I just think God's got a bunch of these rules. Let it, just let it out. Let him talk about that. And, and uh, then the question is, does God have rules, and does God get angry? Obviously, the truth is that God does have rules, and that God does get angry. But you, what you're going to want to do is is couch this in the area of God being a father. That, that his, he's not just a, a cosmic rule keeper. He's not just an angry God. He does get angry and he does have rules. And one of the best verses, and I put it in parentheses on here, and you can, you can just open this up and read it for people. It's out of Psalm 30 and verse 5. In fact, here, let me read it to you. Listen to this verse. Psalm 30 and verse 5. It's talking about God and it says, But his anger lasts only a moment but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may remain for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Now this says that God does get angry, and it may even cause you to weep. But when you, when you do this whole thing, it's like a parent. Hopefully a parent, I mean, I'm sure there are some like this, but a parent may get angry, but that is not who they are. They get angry over wrong, they get angry to correct, they get angry out of love because they want to see something corrected in a person's life. And this is how, what this verse says about God. His anger lasts only for a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. He really does have favor on people, but he does have to deal with wrong, and he does get angry. And then it also reads uh, um, this verse in Psalm 103, verse 13 and 14. Listen to this one. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. I love this. It says that, that God's like a father and he has compassion, but he's also aware that we're just, we're dirt, we're dust. And that in, as such, he needs to deal with us in certain ways to correct us and mold us and shape us and everything like that. But his character is one of compassion. So that's a, that, 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 that's a great verse to use on that. And then finally, the last question is number five here. It actually starts off with a statement. The Bible gives other imagery to help our understanding of God. What is the imagery in these Bible passages? And it mentions two. 
just open them up and read them. They're not a Bible study on this. Don't go to a commentary and get real deep things and all these things. Just let, whoa, he fell. There you go, boy. Just take a look at, the, at this imagery and let it speak for itself. Psalm 90, verses 1 to 4, it talks about God being like a, like a, like a bird, actually, with wings that protect and cover. That's a very, very cool imagery of God, that God is a protector. The other one here in Isaiah chapter 49, verses 13 through 16, talks about two things. First of all, it says he's like a nursing mother. It says a nursing mother cannot forget her child. And then it says God writes our name on the palm of his hand so he never, so he never forgets it. He, not that he forgets, but so it'll be right in front of him all the time. And this is two great imageries. And go ahead and read these. And then, then just say to people before you, before you break up your group, um, and, and you can you can allow discussion on these. Say what what images come to you from these verses when you read this verse? Give me your thought on it, and just let it let it flow. Let people give their thoughts on it. And again, please don't make it a deep commentary, theological, Hebrew-based kind of discussion on a verse. Let it flow. Let it sit there. God's like somebody who protects. Isn't that cool? God's like a nursing mother or something. You ever written something on your hand because you don't want to forget? I want you to think all this week, you can even say this, think all this week that God had got your name written on his hand and he just looks at it all day long. And, uh, and see what that does for your, your understanding of God. So that's this one. Then, then just close it out. Say, let, let's, let's close in prayer. Make it a nice, I don't mean a brief prayer like it doesn't matter. But don't go on and pray for everything going on, all the wrong things going on in the world. Thank God that he is a loving father and, and ask God to help us throughout the week get a greater understanding of how much he loves us. And then next week, we're going to move into something about Jesus that actually goes through John chapter 4, and it's going to deal more about the area of how does religion and rules work together? How does religion, rules, and God, and forgiveness? And, you know, it's a very, a very wonderful thing. We'll talk about that next week. So have an absolutely great week. Uh, this is a great study. Enjoy. Build relationships. Get people to come on Sunday. Really key to get them to come on Sunday, get them to come back the next week and encourage them to bring somebody, okay? God bless you.